Hey, it's Paul here on The Friendly Reviewer. On this channel, we do a ton of tech and gadget reviews, so make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can watch more videos just like this one. I picked up the Ronin S a little bit ago, and I've been testing it out, and I'm really interested in the different updates that come out in the firmware versions. There's been two of them released, one on June 28th, 2018. It was version 1.2.0.10, and then recently one on July 19th, 2018, which is version 1.3.0.20. Both of them have some updates that affect this camera as well as a bunch of other ones. You can check out the description below for everything that I talk about. Now let's check it out. First up for the Nikon group, in version 1.2 it supports the D850. In version 1.3 it's the D5. And both of these are with select Nikkor lenses. And you get that half button press autofocus as well as a focus follow. So that's a really cool feature for all those people out there. For the Panasonic people out there, we have the GH5 and the GH5S with version 1.2 where you can do that half button press to do autofocus. And then the GH3 and GH4 and version 1.3 where you can use the optional RSSP cable. I'll put a link in the description below if you can check that out as well. Pretty inexpensive. So you can do video start and stop as well as photo captures with that cable. I'd really like something similar to that with the E3 port on Canon, so let's talk about Canon. For all those Canon people out there, just like me, version 1.2 came out with support for the Canon 5D Mark IV, so you can do that half button autofocus as well as the focus follow with the wheel. I'm gonna get to a couple things that apply to Canon as well here in a second after I talk about Sony. For Sony, they fixed some of the issues with the create features where occasionally photos would get lost, so hopefully that's fixed in 1.2. I just remembered that I didn't tell you how to update your firmware on the Ronin S. Use that USB-C port in the front and use the DJI Pro Assistant on your computer. I'll put a link up here as well as information description on how to do that. All right, back to the firmware update. For those cameras that are using the RSS IR port, there's a couple updates as well. So version 1.2, it looks like they tried to fix some things and optimize it. I'm not sure it quite worked because in version 1.3 they went further with it. So now you can go to the create feature, you can select the camera and actually pick between which camera type you're using to optimize the eye control and you need the latest app with that. So check that out. In version 1.2 and 1.3 they've been working to improve the motion lapse system. I've been emailing back and forth with DJI trying to figure this out. Maybe it's just my camera and the shutter being too hard and causing some vibrations but if I have long exposure or even sometimes short exposure and it's moving along, it seems to be rather jerky when I do the motion laps. The only thing that seems to help a little is if I only go in one direction with one motor and it's less complicated, but still I have some issues there. Comment below if you're having issues as well. In the long exposure mode, if you're doing that and there's some disturbance, there's gonna be a pop-up in the app versus just kicking out. In version 1.2, they tried to do an enhancement when push is enabled, that's where you can grab it and move it and adjust it for yourself, but occasionally you could trick it into thinking with a quick movement that you're pushing it, but it's just the inertia, so they're trying to fix that. And also in 1.2, there was a little bit of a slow response sometimes with the trigger, so they fixed that for those rare occasions. In version 1.3, there's some miscellaneous updates, such as a little micro stutter that occurred if you're moving quick and stopped, and they got rid of that. There's an issue that if you're panning, occasionally sometimes the roll would go and change a little bit as well as the ability to do a tilted balance test. So you can tilt it while doing the balance test and it's gonna be able to check out that pan for you and not just the tilt and roll. I'm glad DJI is actively working on adding more models to the compatibility list, which a lot of people have been asking for. They're also working on making that motion lapse and some of those features better. Some of those small complaints people have had that I've seen on a lot of their YouTube reviews. So thank you DJI for that. Some of the things I'm most interested in the future, one would be a direct RSS to E3 port for the Canons instead of using this little photo cable. I understand that's easier for you, but that would be a great win for the Canon users, especially with the lower end cameras. And the other one would be my motion lapse issue, which maybe it's just me, maybe it's my hardware, but I don't know, but that's the thing I would really like to get fixed. Again, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you wanna stay up to date with the latest on the Ronin S. I'm gonna to try to do these more often as they roll out. This has been Paul with version 1.2.0.10 and 1.3.0.20 of the Ronin S. Thank you for watching.